Hi, I'm Martha Beck. And I'm Rowan Mangan, and this is another episode of Bewildered, the podcast for people trying to figure it out, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. not just another episode, Marty. No, no, indeed. This, we're going to be doing things a tiny bit differently. Mm -hmm. Uh, Today, we're not doing our usual spiel, talking about our the the struggles we have with everyday life. (laughs) Not because we don't think it's fascinating. <laughs> and not because we don't continue to struggle with everyday life. So hard. But uh, we're trying to figure out a whole new way of doing the podcast. Because. So over the past few months, we've been on a bit of a journey. Mm-hmm. Marty and me and our family. And um, it's been a fun journey. It's been a big journey um but we are sort of seeing that pretty much everyone we know <laughs> <laughs> is is probably one way or another neurodivergent mm-hmm. is and so as a consequence we've been learning a lot about what neurodivergency really means what it's all about yeah yeah and there are all kinds of neurodivergence and it's kind of like the the whole society is starting to talk more about neurodivergence, meaning different nervous systems. And there are various, people get diagnosed with all kinds of things all over the map, right? And I've known for a long time that I have ADHD, or so they told me. But I didn't really think, I just thought, oh, you know, I have a tendency to be a little scattered. But Lately, as we've talked a lot to people we love and realized that so many of them are genuinely, like, identifiably neurodivergent, I've realized it's not just everybody's a little different from each other. For those, for Ro and for me and the people that we love most, we're talking about a really different brain, like, significantly different uh, from, from the normal culture right? Like for what's typical for people. <laughs> and God, so, I'm in the weeds. Help. <laughs> <laughs> and so inevitably there's like this sort of recognition that maybe that's what we're talking about here on Bewildered and maybe this is actually what we've been talking about all along, mm-hmm. right, yeah. is, is this in some form. And so like the worst thing, the most – of the culture thing we could do at this moment is to say clearly this podcast is is for people who are identifiably medically different from la la and this is this team and this is that team and we separate them no 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 that's not what this is at all but we can't deny that like there's this recognition on our parts that these conversations that we have on Bewildered, if they're connecting with you, mm-hmm. then you probably ha- have a type of brain that is unusual and that doesn't have to be m- a medical thing or whatever, but it's just a different way of thinking, right? Yeah, and it's getting, as I said, it's getting more diagnosed for more people. Um, more and more people are being told that they're neurodivergent, that their children are neurodivergent. Um, I think the reason there's so much diagnosis of neurodivergence is actually that the, the cultural norms are becoming more and more ossified, more mm. more insistent, more narrow, like more, we're more, in, ins- more insistent and more insisted upon. Yes. And this is what, you know, Max Weber, my favorite ancient sociologist, said uh, would happen as the sort of left hemisphere culture developed, the, he called it the iron cage of rationalism, it would become more and more insistent upon everyone being alike and you know not being abnormal. But that condition, the, the, everything we see around us is very abnormal for our evolution. So we're mm. talking. I, I have a client who was, you know, great job in New York City and doing really well. Super anxious, having a really rough time, and she went to all these different doctors and psychiatrists and everything, and not one of them said to her, "Your lifestyle is incredibly abnormal for your evolution." <laughs> like living always in little boxes, never seeing the sun. She has really, you know, she works from sun to sun. Uh, not hanging out a lot with people you know in a relaxed way, not being around animals or plants. That's not normal. But 
most people have a, a genotype, a, a neurological ability to fit within what our culture calls a normal lifestyle. But we don't. <laughs> What's normal for the culture and insisted upon in the culture, I don't think it works with our nervous systems. Our nervous systems are actually different. Our mm -hmm. brains are actually different. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember, like... Uh, there's there's so many, there's been so many realizations recently, but um, do you remember that thing that I said to you not long after we got together? Oh yeah, <laughs> this was so funny. Like we were so delighted with each other, all three of us, right? Like we were just so delighted. There was so much laughter and so much love just like exploding um, in our little house in California, in the woods. And then one day I came in and you were like hiding behind a bed, curled up into a ball. And you said, yeah. I just really need to be by myself. And I was like, all right. And you were like, no, I mean, for at least three days. <laughs> and we're like, I was like, we all live in one room. Like, how can we do this? And you kind of, it was so sweet. You kind of confessed to me, I can't do human. Yeah. I can, you said I can fake it for a few days. Like I've been really working hard to fake it. But then I have to be by myself and I have to re I have to heal from mm. trying to be human. And I was yeah. like, is there anyone who's not like that? That's certainly how I am. Like I was, I'm so divergent. I don't even realize I'm divergent. I just assume I'm like everybody else and that everybody else is faking it better. But I was like, oh yeah, you're, you're perfectly normal. We all need to like curl up in a ball and just try to find ourselves again after a few days of being with other people and trying to do social. Yeah, and and yet that's I know that that's not true for everyone. And and so it's been a, a fascinating time and and has been a real reckoning I for me in terms of realizing this on the sort of literal plane that um like there's there's been things that have been like that <laughs> that have been hard for me my whole life that yeah. I've always framed up as being uh, def defectiveness or deficiency yeah. or something. And yeah. so to be at this point now of, no, there's a reason for that and other people have that too. Yeah. And it's just it's just the type of person you are. It's, it's been phenomenal for me. Yeah. It's been a really interesting time. <laughs> I realize there's a whole group of people. And, you know, now we go online and we look at, like, I can go to ADHD on uh, people online and they're actually having experiences. I saw a video the other day of my, it, it, the person said, this is my brain trying to remember why it's going to different rooms in the house. And it was just a duck just frantically galloping <laughs> back and forth along this hallway <laughs> over and over again. And I was like, wait, whoever put this up and saw it recognized in that duck <laughs> themselves and it recognized me too. So the wonderful thing is that as we're discovering this, we also can say that you, Rowan Mangan, came by this very honestly. Yes, you were taught to be true to yourself by the very person who is about to join us as a guest here on Bewildered. We'll be right back with more Bewildered. We don't say this enough. We are so glad you're a bewildered listener. And we're hoping you might want to go to the next level with us. By which I mean, if you rate and review the podcast, it helps new people find us. So we can keep bewildering new souls. And you know how much we love that. Ratings are very much appreciated. Obviously, the more stars you give us, the more appreciation is forthcoming. Reviews are quite simply heaven and we read everyone and exclaim over them and we just love you all. Mwah. So we have a guest on the podcast today <laughs> and this very special moment is because today's guest is the person who introduced us to a very important concept mm -hmm. that has actually become a bit of a guiding metaphor for us. Very much. And like all the best metaphors, it's a story. And so we have brought this person in to tell us the story directly as someone I've known for a very long time, since before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paula Keogh, my mum. Welcome, mum. 
It's great to be here. Hello, Marty. It's like, Hi, Ro. Hi. Hi, Mama. It's so like good to see you. 6.30 in the morning for her. So she's, she's saving our bacon by getting up early. Mm-hmm. So, Mum, many years ago, before I was born, <laughs> uh, it's not all about me, something happened to you that was a cool story. And I was wondering if you would tell us about your trip to Moon River. Mm. Right. Well, it was 1978, the fall of 1978, and I was living in Toronto. I was 28 at the time. And I heard that the monarch butterflies uh, were flying down from northern Ontario on their route back to Mexico. And Mm. um, I thought, wow, that, that would be amazing to see monarch butterflies on their migratory path. So I took off, headed north um, with a map of where they were supposed to be going. And Just by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Paul I got is a cool, week y'all. off work and uh, just took off. And um, I came across, I was following the route that they were taking and, and came across Algonquin National Park. And there were all these butterflies and mm. it was the most amazing sight um, because they have this fluttering uh, movement of their, their wings. They're just sort of shimmering. They seem to be mm. shimmering on mass. You know, it was wow. so beautiful. And they were everywhere in the air, um, in trees, on fences. It was just extraordinary to see. It was really beautiful. And... Wow. Uh, uh, just on that, there used to be um, a million butterflies, a billion butterflies uh, headed Oof. south, but now there's many fewer. Um, but at the time, it was an extraordinary sight. And anyway, I was in the National Park at Algonquin there, and um, there was an information hut, and I went inside, and there was a park ranger um and up on the wall, there was this huge map of the of North America and the migratory path of the monarch butterflies and other um, migratory and migratory birds. And uh, but this monarch butterfly route was there, and he was pointing it out to us, and um, and he said, uh, of course. Only 90% of the monarch butterflies fly this route. There's another route taken by the other 10%, and they're the aberrant genotypes, and they take this different route uh, in order to uh, ensure the survival of the species. If, for example, there's a huge storm or some other catastrophe that knocks out the 90%, you've got this... Mm little 10% of um, butterflies that are on a different route. And uh, I just stood there and I remember thinking, oh, my God, that's me. (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) And, you know, like at the time, 1978, there wasn't a lot of room for difference or thinking about divergence or diversity Mm. and... Um, it was amazing and I just couldn't get it out of my head, this term, aberrant genotype. And um, and I discovered that aberrant, rather than having uh, negative connotations, actually it comes from the Latin, ab, move away, um, hmm. and arere, which is to stray, to wander. Oh, hmm, and I really? Thought, I've just strayed a little from the path most taken. And um, so, you know, the word aberrant is a lovely word. And and so from that point on, I just had a different way of thinking about the difficulties that I was having in fitting into the path most people travel. 
And mm-hmm. I thought, it's okay, you know, I'm just out here on this different path. But there yeah. are another, there's 10% of us here, and right. we're <laughs> on our way to save the species if necessary. I love that. It's oh such a great gosh. story. And I love that definition of aberrant. We were talking about it before we came on the air and I said, well, okay, that, that's such a negative term. But then the way you've explicated it, I think it's only negative because when one does wander astray, there's that, we talk on this co- uh, podcast constantly about the tension, the pressure to be like the 90%. So even the word aberrant is beautiful and has become negative compared to conformity. So thank you for and, that, Paula. Yes. And I love the idea that that 10%, um, it's their destiny to stray. It's their purpose. It's like it's inbuilt. Like that's why aberrant genotype, it's like, no, they're the straying genotype for the species. <laughs> like it's so, it's not they couldn't get their shit together. Right. <laughs> no, right? No, that's right. They, this is what they're here to do. This is really important. Yes. And didn't you tell us, I, I seem to recall, I don't know from where, that only every third generation migrates in the first place and that that third generation, the butterflies are different and they put on extra um, fat so they have enough energy to fly the whole way. And so the, the whole, um, it's a fascinating thing about what's moving all the butterflies from within and then they take off in this one direction and 10% go, no. I must yeah. go south. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's, and it's the, so the environmental factors also come in because apparently it's to do with the milkweed and the availability mm. of, of oh. food along the way. So you you know you've got these two things happening, and uh, they all work together. It's so funny that um, Cheryl Strayed, like Strayed, isn't her the name that she had from birth that she she chose that name and it was after she did that long walk along the Pacific mm. Crest Trail that she later wrote Wild about. And it's just so interesting that aberrant to stray and that strayed was the word that she chose yes. to identify yes. herself with yeah. after something that is very much what we're talking about. Yeah. I, yes. It also brings to mind uh, Tolkien's favourite line, not all who wander are lost. Oh, yes. Right. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes. Maybe we wander because we're found. Yes, that's right. And the association of wander and wonder, you know, those two words together yeah. are so lovely. They just have this mutual sort of connection and resonance. And maybe what we're wondering is part of our genotype as well. You know, that when we wonder, that's also part of that that mysterious pull of of our uh, destiny or our how we're built. Yes. Funny. Yes. yes. Is to to stray in our dreams and our imaginings as well as in our path. Yes. And people say, Don't let your mind wander. But maybe we're supposed to allow our minds wander, and a, a wandering mind is a wandering mind, and that's what finds the way. Yes. Wandering is all my mind ever does. Yes. <laughs> Daydreaming is such a wonderful sort of uh, recreational thinking, I call it, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's what this podcast is all about, recreational thinking. Yes, um, in divergent directions. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, that is such a great way for us to kick off the conversation that we want to have about um, taking different paths and different routes. So thank you so much, Mum, for coming on the show. Uh, and for talked going about- to the Algonquin National Forest in 1978 because that's the kind of person you are. I love <laughs> that. Oh, it exactly. a beautiful trip and uh, Moon River coming through the park and all the migratory birds were there. It was oh. it was wonderful, but yes, the monarch butterflies. Well, you are a queen among the aberrant genotypes. Absolutely, <laughs> uh, and so thank you. Paula is so great. I just <laughs> I love Paula so much. And when she told me that story long time ago, years ago, 
my it blew my mind. It felt so liberating. It was like the perfect metaphor for people who are trying to figure figure it all out. <laughs> like, right. Some of us are way, we're flying way down the Gulf of Mexico and everybody else is up in Ohio and we're going, hmm, why do I feel so pulled this other direction? And I, like you, had always thought that it was something wrong with me. And when, when I heard the story of the butterflies, I just went, oh, it's built in. And it's a call that we really can't deny to go a different direction from most others. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's interesting because even at the same time, as I said earlier, like there's this culture, it gets more and more demanding that we, you know, yes. get everything measured and scored and named and, and classified and all of that sort of school left hemisphere stuff. But, you know, like I, I want to make sure that as we talk about this, we're still talking about it sort of loosely in a in a way like – it's it's how you identify. Mm. It's not how mm. a doctor has told you, you you are. Yeah, yeah. But also I do think, you know, as the, the strictures get tighter, I think more and more people can feel themselves sort of chafing, whether or not they get mm. any kind of diagnosis. It's like, this is too narrow for me. Like 40 hours a week in an, an airless office is just not working for me anymore. And guess what they just reduced my wages and increased my hours it's just it feels to me like it's it's moving it's it's mm. getting more the norm is getting more absolute and as a result more and more people i think are going to identify as outside it oh my god yeah that's so well put i think that's exactly right it's um the airless rooms are getting more airless and the yeah yeah, it's all just starting to feel smaller and, and less easy to handle. And and it really, really, really doesn't mean, oh, please, please understand that we don't mean that this is a better way to be. There are different ways to be. And the thing I love about Paula's metaphor is that the 10% are celebrating the other butterflies. Mm. They're like, we love you. You know, we're all one group and we, we differ so that we can serve. And those who want to go off the beaten path and I can be in a position to say, oh, I'm in a, I have a whole new feeling. I have a whole new idea. It's, it's to serve all the butterflies that some of the butterflies go a different direction, right? And, and I think it may be time for us aberrants <laughs> <laughs> to start really developing and sharing our own perspective. It might, it might help everyone, you know? It might really help the whole group. Yeah, yeah. And so offline, Marty and I have been having conversations about these these things that we're now talking to you about and, and just feeling like this is going to change this podcast a little bit. Like it's just going to change the direction a little bit. It's still going to be us shooting our mouths off. But like and, and we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like we're kind of migrating along <laughs> and then we're like um, – yeah, we're going to we're going to show you the places along the way that we go and assume that you're going to go places that you can um you can explore and celebrate as well. So we've called this the podcast for the people who are trying to figure it all out. But we left what we're figuring. We've left the it sort of vague. Sort and, of universal. <laughs> right. So people who are trying to figure it out and we were like, what are we trying to figure out? I don't know. That's I'm trying to whole... figure that out. <laughs> yes, exactly. And now I think, oh, it's kind of this little mind expansion thing where the it that I've been trying to figure out as we plod through things on this podcast is yeah. what's another path for human beings right now in a very difficult and stressful period of our history? How do we make it a better world? We've made it a an incredibly, we're an incredibly successful species in terms of sheer numbers, but the way we're doing it is not optimal for ourselves or our long-term survival or for other beings in this world. And that's what we're trying to figure out, I think, you know? So, so maybe, you know, as we start to bring these thoughts and these conversations into Bewildered and into this community, um, it'll be more about sort of seeking out like what is our 
butterfly path. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. so for those of us who are feeling bewildered and wanting to be bewildered, you know, that that feeling is actually us looking for our migratory route. And and now's the time for us, Marty, you and I, to start doing this more consciously Mm -hmm. in this in this forum. Yeah. And more deliberately. And we have no answers. Oh, we, God, no. Are you kidding me? We have questions, but that's, you know, it's the, it's the questions that pull you forward. It's the wondering that makes you wander, right? Yeah. And so wonder, it's kind of, it's really interesting for me. In the brain, uh, the opposite of the impulse that makes us afraid, the, the sort of antonym of it is the impulse that makes us draw towards something that makes us curious. So in a weird way, wondering is the opposite of being afraid. Hmm. Like they've done studies where if people are biased against another ethnic group, all they have to ask people is to start wondering what those people have for breakfast or dinner for that fear, that initial fear to drop and for people mm. to be more inclusive. So we just have questions. We're, we're wondering as we wander and we're finding our mi- migratory path from here to someplace and the call to go mm. has come, like every third generation of the butterflies has come, our generation needs to fly, yeah. right? Yeah. And the call is getting louder and louder, and some of us are flying, 90% are flying one general direction, and then there are 10% of us going, I don't know, let's just figure it out. Let's all <laughs> just figure it out together. Yeah, yeah. We'll keep trying to figure it out together. <laughs> yeah. And and just remember that you know I, I said when Paula was on not all who wander or lost are mm-hmm. lost, actually Tolkien said that. But I want to just remind everyone that it's um, we're not lost if we're wondering. We're not lost if we're wandering, but believing that we wander because we're lost will make us feel alienated from our nature. We were born to wander, and we are not lost. So if you feel lost, it's because be- you believe that your direction is wrong. Uh-huh. But it, in your in your instincts, in your genotype, you know that the wandering you're doing is your nature. It's following your truth. And that is what you must do. God, it's so interesting. The other, like, you know, wander, wonder. The other interesting wordplay that I just thought about is, is um, when you take to stray, and you turn it into a noun. That's such a pejorative term, you know. Hmm. Strays, like oh, yeah. stray You're animals, just a stray. and and it's seen as as lacking in mm-hmm. purpose. And and I just I love this reframe that to stray is to um, is to be following the correct path. And <sighs> so you know, it's not about being a defective version of the same thing the culture is making, you know, like a broken doll. We're not broken dolls. We're an entirely different thing. Right. And not different in a way that attacks any other, not difference in defiance of others, but different in ways that are meant to save and preserve others. uh, You like wordplay? Try this. (laughs) Our difference is not defiance, but defense of, of all people. It is yeah. not defending against anyone. It is to defend the entire group to be so that everybody has a chance to arrive at the place that they're called to, no matter what path they take. That's so perfect. I love that. I love that that idea that we're actually all going the same place. We want to like go to the same place. We're all going to the same place. Yeah, and it's nice there. <laughs> yeah, the place we're going Sunny. to. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. It's it's yeah. that. Uh, sorry, I go back to my near death experience the, of absolute and complete love. No question in my mind. Every human butterfly on this planet is headed there. So for bewildered, you know, we're still going to be showing up here and and having fun and and but just like maybe with just a little bit more awareness of why we might be all on this different route and maybe talking to people about ideas related to this. Yeah. Too. So let's all have so much fun and so much joy and so much delight and laughter on the path we're finding no matter where we go. Thanks for flying with us. And stay Stay wild. wild. We hope you're enjoying Bewildered. If you're in the USA and want to be notified when a new episode comes out, text the word WILD to 570-873-0144. We're also on Instagram. Our handle is Bewildered Podcast. 
You can follow us to get updates, hear funny snippets and outtakes, and chat with other fans of the show. Bewildered is produced by Scott Forster with support from the brilliant team at MBI. And remember, if you're having fun, please rate and review and stay wild.